This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, David Muir. Good morning, everyone. We're coming on the air with breaking news from the Supreme Court. The justices handing down a major decision on guns in America, striking down New York's licensing regime when it comes to carrying a gun outside the home, the concealed carry law, which could have a sweeping impact nationwide, in particular on seven other states. The decision comes, of course, amid this renewed debate in our country over gun safety in the wake of mass shootings across the U.S. This opinion written by Clarence Thomas, uh, it, it was a majority opinion. Uh, Chief Justice John Roberts on board. The opinion says New York's law violates the 14th Amendment. Uh, and uh, apparently they have, yes, struck down New York's licensing regime. It's a 100-year-old law on the books in New York State. And the question now is how quickly it affects other states in this country. Uh, let's bring in Terry Moran, who covers the court and has covered it for quite some time. This is a major ruling, Terry. It is, David. It is a big ruling on gun rights in the United States and a victory for those who advocate for those rights. New York State uh, required people who wanted to carry a firearm concealed outside the home to show proper cause, which the state defined as a special need different from ordinary citizens for self-defense. Today, the Supreme Court says that's not good enough under the Second Amendment, that the Second Amendment presumes uh, the right to carry, keep and bear arms is the language in the Constitution. And in this case, the Supreme Court says that bear arms means the right to carry. Now, there is an important caveat here. While this is a sweeping decision, uh, two crucial justices, Justice Brett Kavanaugh and Chief Justice John Roberts, sign on and limit the opinion a little bit, saying uh, that the Second Amendment uh, isn't a blank check. They want more cases in the future that will define where people can carry a firearm out the, outside the home. There was a lot of discussion about what about football stadiums? What about taverns where people are drinking? Are there limits to this? But the sweeping ruling issued and written by Justice Clarence Thomas uh, says that the history of the Second Amendment is crucial and that states must presume that there is a constitutional right to carry a firearm outside the home. And, and Terry, we had an indication that this is where the court could be headed back when they heard the case. Chief Justice John Roberts at the time saying uh, the idea that you need a license to exercise the right is unusual in the context of the Bill of Rights. That's right, David. New York did have one of the strictest gun uh, concealed carry laws in the United States. It is 100 years old, and it does have that unusual mechanism that you apply for the right to carry a firearm outside the home and that you need to show proper cause and that New York state courts had defined that as a special need. Uh, and what the court is saying in here is that constitutional rights, you don't need a special need to demonstrate you can exercise them. That does not as the concurrence by Justice Kavanaugh and Chief Justice Roberts shows, means that you can carry anything anywhere. But those boundaries have yet to be determined. And on the foundation of Justice Thomas's opinion, it says that the Supreme Court uh, is saying that the states must presume the right to carry a firearm outside the home across this nation. All right, Terry Moran, stick with us here. We want to bring in our legal analyst, uh, Kate Shaw, also a uh, legal scholar. Uh, and Kate, you saw the dissent here from Justice Breyer, uh, Justice Sotomayor, and Justice Kagan uh, joining in that dissent. They talk about the gun violence uh, in America. They offer some of the numbers. Uh, and Justice Breyer writes, many states have tried to address some of the dangers of gun violence just described by passing laws that limit in various ways who may purchase, carry, or use firearms. And this was the key line, I thought, the court today severely burdens states' efforts to do so. That's right, David. And Breyer really points to democracy. He says the representatives elected by individuals in places like New York have chosen to pass laws that are pretty restrictive in terms of who can carry a gun in a public place in a city like New York. And that's democracy. I think Breyer seems to say different parts of the country can and should have different legal regimes regarding carrying guns outside. And maybe the conditions in New York require different rules than those in less populated parts of the country. You know, he also says the Thomas opinion is very focused on history. What history shows about permissible gun regulations is a critical part of the analysis of whether a current gun law survives. And Breyer says, well, what about things that don't have an obvious historical parallel? We don't have a history of regulating 
guns in subways and nightclubs and sports stadiums because we didn't have those at the founding era. And so it's not clear on the majority's opinion how regulations in areas like that uh, will work under this new test. So it's an extraordinarily important opinion. And I think Breyer makes clear it leaves many questions open. All right, Kate Shaw with us here this morning. Kate, thank you as always. I want to bring in uh, Devin Dwyer, who covers the Supreme Court for ABC News as well. And, and Devin, one of the immediate questions is how quickly this could impact not just New York State, but other states across the country. Yeah, big impact here, David. Uh, seven other states, home to 80 million Americans, have similar laws like New York that limit the ability of people to carry a loaded hidden handgun in public. Uh, and what the court just said is that those laws can no longer remain in force. They struck them down. Uh, it's going to be easier in simple terms to carry a weapon in those states, predominantly big blue states like New York and California. Um, interesting, though, Justice Thomas, who wrote this opinion, did say, uh, that the Second Amendment guarantees to Americans the right to bear arms, as we've been talking about, but also uh, that they must be subject to certain reasonable, well-defined restrictions. It sort of harkens back to uh, what Justice uh, Scalia said in the Heller decision uh, a few years back. He said that the right to bear arms is not unlimited. So we do know that this court has its eye on the ability of states to regulate guns. And we do know also, David, uh, that the way Justice Thomas wrote this opinion, leaning in on history and tradition, as the basis for evaluating gun laws will now open the floodgates to litigation in a number of states just at a time when we are uh, trying to crack down on gun violence in this country. But Devin, just to break through this for our audience, this comes down to the fundamental right to carry a handgun in public uh, for self-defense uh, with no or very little questions asked. That's right. This comes down to the ability of people to get permits in states that require them to carry that weapon. Uh, most states, David, actually don't require permits. You're able to carry them uh, openly in some cases or concealed carry without a permit. But this applies to some of the most populous states in the country. Big states like California and New York, where these regimes have tried to limit and restrict the carrying of weapons uh, in sensitive public places. Uh, and the Supreme Court just made it much easier for people law-abiding people to get those permits and carry them for self-defense. And this was a law on the books for 100 years in New York State. More than 100 years, this book, this law in New York State was uh, passed in 1911. And so uh, the state of New York actually argued, David, that history was on their side, that the state of New York and many other states uh, had a rich history of restricting the ability of citizens to carry guns. Uh, but the Supreme Court today, looking a little further afield, Clarence Thomas saying the broad sweep of American history actually supports a different view on this discretionary requirement uh, that state officials were limiting people from carrying weapons. All right. Devin Dwyer, our thanks to you as well. I want to bring in our Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas. Uh, Pierre, you heard me talking about uh, the dissent that was written, talking about the gun violence in America, the numbers, uh, but for uh, particularly the authorities over at the Department of Justice who are trying to um, tackle the issue of gun violence in this country. Um, curious what their reaction might be from within DOJ, though I'm sure you've had little time to get that. Well, David, DOJ will be watching this decision very closely, as is law enforcement leaders across the country. And the issue is timing, David. Uh, since 2019, we've seen a 30 percent increase in homicides, many of them by firearm. We've seen a 60 percent uh, surge in mass shootings that we've talked about over and over on the air. So the question is, will it much more easy for people to have weapons in public, concealed weapons, and will that lead to more shootings and more accidents and different kinds of things? That's the thing law enforcement has been concerned about uh, regarding these types of cases. And David, I can tell you that law enforcement believes that we're in the midst of the surge. They see no end in sight. They are trying to push down these numbers by focusing on career criminals. But the notion that more people could be walking around with concealed weapons is something that law enforcement is concerned about and will continue to be, David. Pierre Thomas, who covers the Justice Department for us. Pierre, thank you. And I should note here that Justice Alito, uh, part of the concurring opinion, obviously, taking down the dissent, in particular, uh, pointing out the mass shooting in Buffalo uh, not so long ago at that supermarket. Uh, Justice Alito asking, will a person bent on carrying out a mass shooting be stopped if he knows that it is illegal to carry a handgun outside the home? And how does the dissent account for the fact that one of the mass shootings near the top of its list took place 
uh, in Buffalo, obviously that supermarket in Buffalo uh, not long ago. The New York law at issue in this case obviously did not stop that perpetrator, that from Justice Alito. I want to bring in Aaron Katursky, investigative reporter uh, with ABC. And Aaron, any reaction from uh, New York's uh, governor at this point? Well, so far, David, we know that this is the ruling that the mayor of New York City has said has kept him up nights as he envisions a city with more guns on the street. And in fact, he has imagined a, a subway car full of passengers carrying weapons and has said this is not the Wild West. So it is now going to be left to the governor and state lawmakers to try to legislate where a gun can be carried and, and where it can't, a stadium, an arena, the subway. And now the, the scramble is on that New York will have to rewrite its, its licensing regime. The governor is talking right now, David. She has not made any immediate comment, but lawmakers have been meeting behind the scenes for weeks anticipating this ruling. They saw which way the oral argument was going, David. Uh, and the NRA, uh, thank you, Aaron Katursky, the NRA out with the tweet saying uh, the NRA has won the SCOTUS case on guns today. I want to bring in Rachel Scott. Uh, live up on the Hill. And, and Rachel, you've been covering this push for some sort of gun safety reform, this bipartisan group of senators uh, coming up uh, with some sort of an agreement uh, in recent days. Not everything that President Biden certainly had asked for, but in this climate in Washington, the fact that they had headway on, on any of these issues was significant. Uh, and this is headed to a vote. Yes, David, it is notable that this decision is coming down as gun safety legislation is making its way through Congress. The Senate could vote as early as today on a gun safety package. It's roughly $13 billion. It would enhance background checks for gun buyers under the age of 21. It would close the so-called boyfriend loophole, stopping people convicted of domestic violence from purchasing or owning a gun. It would also add funding for school security and mental health programs. This does not go as far as the president or Democrats wanted. They wanted an assault weapons ban. They wanted to raise the legal age to purchase those type of firearms to 21. Again, that is the common denominator between the Uvalde and the Buffalo mass shootings. Those 18-year-old suspects being able to purchase AR-15 style rifles. This would not be a ban on that, but it would be the most significant gun safety legislation to pass Congress in decades, David. All right, Rachel Scott live on the Hill. Rachel, our thanks to you as always as well. We should note that New York's Governor Kathy Hochul has now responded to her me talking to Aaron a moment ago, seeing if we'd heard anything from her yet. She is now out with a tweet. It is outrageous that at a moment of national reckoning on gun violence, the Supreme Court has recklessly struck down a New York state law that limits those who can carry concealed weapons. Uh, in response to this ruling, we are closely reviewing our options. In fact, the governor speaking just moments ago. Let's listen. Friction justify the infringement. And most people would say, yes, we have a right to protect people from gun violence. But I'll simply say in our very quick analysis, because this is only minutes old, they have now said that the government must demonstrate that the regulation is consistent with this, this, this nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. That's it. No longer can we strike the balance. Only if a firearm regulation is consistent with this nation's historical tradition may a court conclude that the individual's conduct falls outside the Second Amendment's unqualified command. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. Governor Kathy Hochul of New York reacting uh, to the New York state law on concealed carry, the restrictions on concealed carry being struck down by the Supreme Court, the opinion uh, written by Clarence Thomas, the majority opinion uh, from the court. Let's get back to Terry Moran. You could hear Terry, uh, the governor, uh, obviously very upset that, that the New York state's law has been uh, struck down. The court pointing today to historical context. And as Devin Dwyer pointed out a moment ago, the 100 year history uh, of New York state uh, did not win up against the history in the eyes of the a majority opinion on the court, the history of this country. Well, there's history and there's history, David, and the Supreme Court, especially those favoring uh, this reading of the Second Amendment, write that history a certain way. There are other scholars and other justices who look at it differently, but this is now the law that unless a gun regulation comports with the history as Justice Thomas understands it as well, there are plenty of laws in our history think of Tombstone or other Western uh, towns that banned open carry uh, of firearms for public safety. He dismisses those saying they didn't represent the mainstream. So 
history and history. But there's one other thing at work in this case, which is that it focuses on the right to self-defense. But we all know that at this point in our history, one of the driving forces of gun ownership and public carry of guns is a political expression, a political expression of a certain view of America, of, of a certain political might even. And that was nowhere discussed. And I think that is one of the things that, that people are concerned about as people who oppose, say, drag queen story hour show up to try to intimidate people. As uh, January 6th demonstrates, there were weapons in that crowd, but D.C. had a very strict uh, carry law on the books. It might have been different after this decision. So there is not just self-defense, but there is the political role that guns play in our country today at stake in this decision. No question about that. Bottom line, Terry, for our viewers covering, uh, watching our live coverage here of the Supreme Court ruling, major ruling on guns today. And Terry, bottom line again, this concealed carry law in New York State, which allowed the government to issue a license to ask some questions, uh, struck down by the court. And this will have uh, implications uh, far reaching. Several other states that have these limitations as well likely affected right away. Absolutely. Right now, uh, as according to this ruling, states must presume that the right to carry a firearm outside the home belongs to every single American unless uh, there is some deficit in their, in their right, unless they're mentally ill or felons or traditional rule reasons for denying them the right to carry a firearm anywhere in this country. Terry Moran with us. Terry Moran, Kate Shaw, Devin Dwyer, our entire team here uh, with us for these Supreme Court decisions. Uh, I thank you all. Our coverage is going to continue on ABC News Live, abcnews.com. Of course, we'll be back with live coverage of the January 6th hearings uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on ABC. I'll be back later with the entire team for World News Tonight. And I should note that for many of you, we return to GMA already in progress. I'm David Muir, New York. Good day. This has been a special report from ABC News. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.